Welcome all to Cytospad AMA session today. Today we have an amazing guest uh, from one of the projects that Cytospad is currently conducting for you guys. Cytospad is one of the fastest growing IDO platforms in the web free space. And we welcome uh, Chris today from Verita Project. Chris is the CEO and executive manager of this amazing infrastructural product. And he is happy to share a lot of insights with you today and some amazing updates. So we welcome you, Chris. Please introduce yourself. Yeah, thanks, Dan. It's uh, wonderful to be here and um, great to uh, connect more with um, the Cytospad community. Uh, yeah, so Chris is my name. I'm from uh, Adelaide in Australia, uh, down south on the south coast, uh, and I'm the CEO and uh, co-founder at Verita. Awesome. Yeah, you're not too far away from me, actually. What is it, like three hours away from the Brisbane side, which is <laughs> no, a, a, an accessible sure, distance in a way. <laughs> yeah, so um, thank you so much for being today with us, Chris. Uh, it is a privilege and a pleasure as well. I'm um, looking forward to the success of your project. You guys have done an amazing job as far as I can see. Um, we will have some uh, interesting questions today, guys. Um, make sure if you have some comments, uh, put it down below uh, um, in this YouTube video and we will get back to Chris and ask these questions to make sure that we respond and give you the feedback as well. Chris, um, we will start with the first question today. Uh, we know that the Rita began um, as a research project back in 2018. Can you elaborate on the inspiration behind this project in general? I guess, yeah, around that time, I, uh, or a bit before then actually, I had a company here in Australia and um, another company that I founded and we were building software for um, government organizations, government departments and, and non-profit organizations. And uh, as a part of that, we had to deal with a lot of very sensitive personal information um, about end clients. Uh, we were supporting uh, organizations that provided um, sort of counseling services and support services to uh, vulnerable people in the community. And, um, you know, people would come in off the street and ask for help, um, maybe with financial problems or gambling addiction and, and things like that. And um, this per person would come and sit and tell their life story to, to a, a counselor. And the counselor were entering all that information into our software. Um, they take all these very sensitive notes down, um, all of the you know the date of birth, personal information about these people, and we had to sort of protect that data and make sure it was secure. Um, and in the process of uh, talking to a lot of our customers, um, there's a really interesting theme that that came up, and it was that they loved our software. It did all the reporting. It, it managed all of the requirements that they they had. But when somebody told their story. Um, Often as a result of that, um, the counselor would refer that person on to three or four other people to go and get help. And that meant that the, the client had to go and repeat their story three or four times. And in doing so, um, it was often very traumatic for that person to repeat their story. And they often didn't go and get the support that they needed. And I had this sort of eureka moment where I realized that while we were building great software, it was a SaaS business model, it was profitable. We were kind of creating this problem because people lost their data, they lost their identity. and it had this sort of very, very real world implication for people. It's not like, you know, they had a folder that they could carry around with them and, and go, hey, here's my story. And so um, that's how Verita started. Um, I, I exited that company, I sold out of that, and I really wanted to tackle this problem. How do we um, take control back as individuals and have technology infrastructure that allows us to be in control uh, of our data? And uh, I was really inspired by the blockchain Web3 movement, you know, the concept of not your keys, um, not your crypto. You know, we can, how do we apply that to the concept of not your keys, not your identity, or, or not your keys, not your data? And um, that was initial inspiration and then um yeah from the journey ahead you know ryan is the other co-founder who joined mm -hmm. me he was working in in crypto and has had a very personal interest in in uh, data sovereignty and, and these types of issues and had seen some of that working in a in a large mm -hmm. um you know consulting firm here in australia and so he joined me in, on the mission uh after i sort of put together a proof of concept to demonstrate that, hey, this sort of stuff is possible awesome awesome well um i mean it makes sense what you guys do and definitely there is a, a clear usage of the blockchain technology within your product as well how big is your team by the way like what's the number right now uh it varies it depends on uh how you think about a team and this is one of the joys of um of crypto projects you know we have I guess mm -hmm. a core team of engineers, um, I think, yeah, mm -hmm. six or seven, and then we've got ancillary sort of, you know, admin and marketing, but we also work with a lot of third party agencies and support, whether that's in PR mm -hmm. or back office and, and admin and, and, and other marketing community sort of things. So 
you know, if you actually added Makes everyone sense. up, it'd probably be, you know, 20 to 30 in terms of the, the full team of support that we have uh, supporting the project. Amazing. Amazing. The reader has a unique uh, market position. How did you come to realize the necessity to fill the niche and create centralized uh, private database storage? And why has it never been created before? Like, what's the reason why we don't see this sort of product in the market these days? Yeah, so I guess coming back to the story before is, you know, I wanted to solve this problem of people owning their own data and, uh, you know, building the technology to do that. Um, initially, I was like, hey, there's got to be a solution here in Web3. You know, there's got to be a, a, a database solution, you know, that uh, protects people's information and, and um, to be used to build this future of people owning their own data. And um, yeah, very quickly realized that that doesn't exist. You know, we've got um, some great storage solutions in Web3, things like IPFS, Filecoin, Arweave, um, Sia, um, there's others as well. But for the most part, they're dealing with public data, the information is public. And I think that that's a, you know, that's a part of blockchain, everything's public for the most part. Obviously, there's a lot of interest in privacy, preserving blockchains and things like that. But the reality is doing things private and uh, is a lot harder than doing things that are public in terms of technology. You've got to do all these other sort of, all, all these other considerations around authentication and encryption and access controls. Mm -hmm. And it's a much, you know, more difficult um, problem space. So I think that's a factor. Um, I think one critique I'd have of the, the ecosystem a little bit is is trying to have a blockchain for everything, but not everything is um, should have a blockchain. Sometimes you need to use blockchain and have other things sitting alongside that. Um, and so I think there's been a tendency to kind of sit inside this blockchain bubble without necessarily realizing that you can build technology leveraging blockchain without it being 100% a blockchain as well. And that gives you a lot more freedom with the technology you can build. But I think we're seeing more maturity in the space in that regard now. You guys are building on the Polygon, correct me if I'm wrong, right? Yeah, so our technology stack is designed to be multi-chain, but the first chain mm -hmm. that we're anchoring to is is the Polygon POS uh, chain at the moment. And amazing. Amazing. I saw you've done an interview or some sort of uh, video session with the Polygon ID guys as well on the Twitter. Yeah, we work very closely with those guys. In fact, I visited them a couple of times in um, mm. in Portugal where their team is and uh, yeah, great team. And mm -hmm. we share a lot of uh, definitely a, a similar vision of the future, but we also have a lot of alignment on the technology side. So yeah, they're a, a really strong partner of ours. Oh yeah, they are very dedicated in this space. And um, I had a chat to them actually, and uh, it seems like their um, you know technological solution is getting scaled up substantially right now there are a lot of projects integrating it so far so which is great to see i mean like this is what industry needs these days we need you know high quality approach without a rush just slowly and steadily integrating proper solutions to uh, make it secure and safe for people to use that um you know they use this the beautiful side of the blockchain is that you know your data and the privacy is stored within the safety infrastructure projects in general what are the main obstacles you face today how are you prepared to tackle them like i'm sure there are challenges that you have to face yeah. and uh, <laughs> things that will uh, make you stressed out and you know make you sleepless at nights but what are they there's there's definitely lots i mean um a startup isn't for the fight hard to begin with and then doing that in crypto is a, is a new layer again. I think um, definitely one of the challenges that we've had from the very beginning is, you know, the technology that we've put together, it, you know, can be used for almost anything, almost any industry vertical or any use case. I mean, um, we sort of loosely describe our database infrastructure as like MongoDB, but decentralized and, and encrypted and private. And if you think of something like MongoDB or even SQL databases, you know, they're used you know, in software across almost every industry vertical, you know, across every country. So one of the things for us has been focused, you know, how do we, um, where do we put our most attention? You know, where do we focus on that we can have the biggest impact um, uh, at an early stage sort of project. So, you know, having to you know, always be focused and, and also constantly reevaluate that focus. You know, crypto changes quickly, Web3 um, technology changes. So being adaptable um, is a really important part of, um, you know, maintaining that focus. Um, scaling, scaling is always hard once you sort of have product market fit. So, you know, we're fortunate at the moment that we've got a lot of partners and a lot of people that want to talk to us, but at the same time, um, we're still scaling up. So, you know, there's a, a, a lot of uh, balance there to make sure that we're, Supporting the partners that, that are coming in and, and making sure we've prioritized and, and focus on the on the appropriate ones that, that are going to bring the, the biggest value to the network. Um, and then similarly on the scaling side, probably team. You know, we're always um, looking for really great people to join us on the engineering or marketing side. Um, one of the great things about crypto is, you know, you have a community. And so, um, you know, I've been really focused on, particularly recently, uh, trying to hire or, or bring people in from our existing community. 
um, I think that's a really great way to support our community and also allow people to, um, uh, you know, give people incentive to participate in what we're building and, and know there's a pathway there to uh, become more more actively involved in the in the team. So that's definitely, uh, I guess, an ongoing challenge, in, you know, in the scaling. And then the last one is probably communication. You know, um, what we're doing is, you know, there's technical complexity. Um, there's a lot of new ideas. Um, you know, we're effectively outlining a vision for the future of how the world can work and how we can handle our own data and identity. And there's a bit of a paradigm shift there. So, um, you know, there's a constant challenge there to make sure that we're communicating that effectively, you know, in, in a simple way. And um, to that vein, we've um, we've actually just started producing a lot of short form content, uh, short form videos that really succinctly sort of explain some of the things that we're doing and, and some of the our partners and some of the work that we're doing to, to try and sort of Amazing. better communicate. And I think we can always do better in that space. Awesome. Awesome. Well, um, it seems like your project is getting highly recognized by a lot of VCs uh, and the top tier, you know, influencers in this space. So uh, getting closer to the G TG, how do you feel? Like, do you sort of feel stressed out now or there is a lot of positivity and energy inside of you <laughs> that pushes you <laughs> off your limits? It's a bit of both. I think it's super <laughs> exciting when you see um, when you see the community really engaged and really on board with what mm -hmm. we're doing and and um, and growing and understanding you know the value proposition that we've got. Like that enthusiasm is is pretty infectious. But it's also for us like it's you know we we're not a young project. You know as you said, 2018 was the early start of this. So yeah. in some ways, there's a um, uh, not a feeling of relief, but a real you know um, achievement and and um, getting to a milestone here of us being able to you know launch the token and have all the pieces in place and. and and know that we're in a really strong footing and strong foundation for the years ahead. Um, you know, we haven't rushed this. We've we've sort of done um, everything as best we can to get this point and starting to sort of see the rewards of that. So, um, but yeah, at the same time, definitely there's a lot going on. So there's a lot of balls to juggle at the moment. So what are the products available right now from your side? Like what can people actually go and test out? Yeah, so we have, um, it depends on how you define a product a little bit, but we have the network itself. We sort of see the network as a product um, for mm -hmm. developers to build. So as a part of a network, we have a, a developer SDK and a, a bunch of documentation and tools there for, for developers to build. We have the Verita wallet. So for those listening, if you haven't already, feel free to go uh, to the App Store or the Google Play Store and download the Verita wallet. Um, we actually won a Red Dot award for the Verita wallet. So for those who aren't familiar, Red Dot awards are um, probably the most globally prestigious sort of award for design. And so we won mm -hmm. an award for that in the in a particular mobile app design category. So as far as we know, it's the first mobile wallet that supports um, multi-chain crypto wallet, but also decentralized identity, verifiable credentials, uh, decentralized data mm -hmm. ownership and, and messaging. So it's uh, almost what we think of as what will be sort of version two of the crypto wallets that we have today, encompassing all these additional uh, capabilities. And you can download that today and, and, and have a play with that. Um, we have Verita Missions. So you can go to missions.reader.network. You can use the wallet that we've got to scan a QR code and sign in. And Missions is really a, a great way for us to, A, show people how our technology works, um, B, participate in um, you know using the wallet, um, storing some data, getting some credentials, you know, proving some information about mm -hmm. themselves. But lastly, it's it's really important for our partners because we're allowing our partners to demonstrate their and showcase their technology. So for instance, Polygon ID, one of our key partners, we've run a lot of missions with them. We've run missions with their partners to showcase mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. our, what those partners are doing. So things like claiming proof of humanity credential, connecting your Steam account to prove your gaming. Um, credentials. So there's a whole range of things there that um, people can do in missions. And a bonus for that is you earn XP points, which um, ultimately uh, end up becoming claimable as uh, Verita Storage Credit Token. So they're probably the three key things. Um, we have announced Verita One as a new product, as a, I guess, a new type of uh, social media that brings together your Web 2 and your Web 3 um, social media identities um, and your data. Um, so we've announced that, but it's not live yet. It's uh, in private alpha at the moment. We're looking forward to releasing that. Um, uh, in the near term. Amazing, amazing. I mean, a bit of a dedication happening here, um, <laughs> at least to say. So uh, well done, guys. I mean, you, you've done a you've done a fantastic job so far. It's all um, it's all can be seen on the Twitter, guys. Make sure you go and check it out. Like they've, they've got a lot of news and updates coming up there and soon. And uh, once they have a TG event, there'll be a lot of updates and surprises for you as well. So make sure you go and check out this project. It's uh, uh, one of those gems that you know, you could hardly find these days in the in the crypto industry. Um, Chris, how do you see the balance between the value of data for AI innovation and an individual's fundamental right to privacy? What's your take on that? Yeah, look, that's a great question, Dan. Um, I think we've had a, just more philosophically, we've had a, um, a tension 
um, for a long time now uh, between um, you know emerging technology and compromising on privacy. Um, you know, I've sort of you know we've got now this situation where the large tech companies Google, Apple, Microsoft they have access to a lot of our personal information, and we we don't have a whole lot of privacy that perhaps we had once before. And there's a real risk, I think, with the innovation we're seeing in AI and, and how uh, transformative it's going to be that, again, um, there's risks here that we sacrifice our privacy in return for sort of using this new technology. And so, you know, there's uh, it's important that we step back and kind of consider that and um, and make informed decisions. And I think as a as a as a founder and as a technologist, my kind of objective is to use technology to improve the world that we live in. And a key part of that is providing optionality. So, um, you know, Keith, part of what we're trying to do is provide the technology that makes it, you know, possible to build, you know, privacy preserving applications and software, which would extend into um, into AI applications. So um, at the moment, that doesn't exist. At the moment, everything is centralized in AI. And so um, if all of that information is is with these centralized companies. And that's a huge risk that um, we need to be aware of. And um, yeah, ultimately, we should be providing some alternatives for people. Understood. Okay, makes sense. Well, it's a perfect answer. Uh, what tools will allow Verita to manage the increasing user uh, data uh, density as the network grows and integrates multiple blockchains? Because you've said you will uh, eventually become omni-chain, right? So there will be a lot of intensity happening happening on your product in general. Yeah, so there's a few parts to that. So uh, for us, the way that we think about data density is, um, well, there's data as a whole, but then there's data density. And we mm. think of that as the data that an individual has. So like, you know, mm. Dan, you might have 50 megabytes of data on the network and I might have a gigabyte of data. So um, mm. obviously I've got a, an increased sort of density there. And one of the tools and I guess products that we'll be launching is um, the Verita Data Connector Framework. And so what it will be doing is um, it's sort of like a, I guess a technical tool, but it'll allow individuals to pull their data from lots of different centralized platforms. So pulling your financial data out of banks, pulling your healthcare data out of healthcare systems, your social media information or um, chat messages or email from a whole range of different platforms and take ownership of that. And so as we expand those connectors, um, we'll be able to enhance the, increase the data density of, of each individual um, and allow them to take more ownership and control of of all, you know, as much of data that, that we possibly can. And so then on the technology okay. side, we we measure this in the terms of storage slots. So we have this concept of a storage slot where, um, you know, each um, uh, each storage slot has a certain amount of megabytes. And so you might have one storage <laughs> slot, but I might have 50 because I've got uh, more data. And so the network's designed to handle that and scale appropriately. So in our network explorer that uh, is, is going to be re-released soon, we'll have the, the ability to view um, these storage slots view this data density and actually um, allow everybody to see the activity on the network um, in terms of the utilization and provide a lot of um, a deeper insights. And then on the managing side of that, we will be launching our, um, our storage node tools and our staking capabilities, which will effectively allow node operators uh, to very easily spin up uh, new nodes on the network um, and stake the token to support that. So we sort of have a, a, a number of pieces of the puzzle there, whether it's, you know, um, you know, network explorers see the, have insights or whether it's tools for the node operators to spin up infrastructure quickly. And yep. um, we're building a lot of pieces mm -hmm. to the puzzle to manage that, that data density. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, makes sense. The VDA utility token takes the center um, stage position in the Verita ecosystem and the economic model. And yet it's not a governance token and it's not a speculative token. Like, could you elaborate for our listeners as to how the token operates and what benefits it actually gives to the owners. So maybe you can give yeah. us a little bit more information about that. 100%. Thank so you. Um, you could think of what we're doing a little bit similar to Filecoin. Um, so mm -hmm. what we have is we have node operators. So node um, nodes operate all around the world that store um, data on the network. And to um, have your node your infrastructure discoverable, uh, you need mm -hmm. to stake the Verita token. Once you do so, your node is then available to um, uh, effectively join the network and start to earn a revenue stream based on the data that you're um, storing on the network. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It's based on a user pays model, obviously similar to crypto. So an end user, just like you would pay for a transaction on Ethereum, um, you pay mm -hmm. uh, in the Frida token to pay for storage of your data uh, on the network. Um, mm -hmm. We really like the model that happens today in software where typically you can have free software and the, the software developer can pay for storage. So we will have a, a sponsored option where 
app developers or, or whatnot can um, sponsor the storage cost on behalf of their users. You know, perhaps they're funded by advertising or other sources and that's a, a viable option. So we want to make sure that that is also an option here. And then um, for token holders, there's, there's two key things. So one is um, uh, you can stake the Verita token uh, you will be able to stake the Frida token to secure the network um, and help provide tokens there to almost grease the wheels of the network and the infrastructure and earn protocol fees. And then separately, um, we will be uh, launching a lending pool. And so that will allow token holders to lend their tokens into a lending pool and, and node operators can borrow from that pool to have tokens to stake. So effectively, there's a couple of ways there that uh, token holders will be able to earn a return, which will scale up significantly uh, as the network continues to, to grow and, and store more data. As far as I know, Veri is not just focused on the end users, but also developers, right? What sort of toolkits do you guys provide um, to accelerate the developer onboarding? Yeah, so we have a developer SDK. So developers can visit developers.verita.network. Um, so we've got a fully featured SDK there um, that allows developers to do things like um, create uh, encrypted databases. So create a, a Web3 encrypted database for storing sensitive information. So that could be as simple as storing um, configuration, you know, for, for the user um, that's specific to them and private, or it could be um, storing something like healthcare data or for a decentralized health insurance um, product. So um, there's a lot of freedom and flexibility there. Uh, it also allows developers to request data from a user. So you could request, you know, user to go and um, you know, prove that they've completed a KYC process and our mobile app will actually lead the user through a process there to complete that with a third party and then uh, generate a proof and share that back to your application. So um, there's a, a whole range of capabilities, but they're just a couple of key ones. And then um, mm -hmm. we kind of have an ecosystem of, of third parties that uh, we've integrated that you can actually leverage using our SDK. So um, we support some a range of different credential standards, including Polygon ID, which is a, a zero knowledge type of credential. We support the Czech Network, which is a UK based credential uh, network. They've got their own token and doing some really interesting stuff around mm -hmm. creating a, a payment infrastructure for credentials. And we have some of the other uh, emerging zero knowledge uh, partners as well, like ZK Pass and Reclaim Protocol. So for developers that are um, trying to build apps that are looking at real world data, whether that's real world assets, whether that's looking at you know proving people's identity in the real world, um, whether that's you know handling personal information, we've got a whole range of, of tools and, and developer libraries there that um, can help make that process a lot simpler. Okay. What are the main goals for 2024 and 2025? I mean, obviously your main objective now is to conduct a successful TGE, but what would be the next step for you? Yeah, 100%. So the TGE allows us to do some really, um, unlocks a, a bunch of really exciting things for us. So some of the products that I touched on before, Verita One, um, we've got a couple of others in the pipeline as well. One of the key things that we're looking to do is launch our grants program so we can enable our community to start to um, contribute uh, in a more meaningful way to, to scaling out of the, the network and the tools that we have. So part of that is we want to support um, up to 100 different sources of data that people can pull from. So upload your Google archive, you know, pull data from a bank, pull data from, you know, your Fitbit or your Strava or pull in all your Telegram history and really allow people to pull in as much data as they, they possibly can. Um, you know, we're looking to, to onboard at least a million users onto the Verita network in that time frame and really start to scale up the the, the data density that those users have in terms of the number of storage slots that, that have been um, stored there. Um, and we have some really exciting stuff in the pipeline as well around providing ways for users to earn leveraging their data. Um, so, you know, for us, you know, a key goal there is to have a significant revenue stream that's flowing back to users that's that's not coming from us, you know, as a network, but is actually genuine like fiat revenue that's being um, pulled through the network um, based on people effecti effectively um, uh, licensing their, their data or um, using it in, in meaningful ways for, for research purposes and, and things like that. And actually probably one last goal as well is we've announced our, um, our DAO. So over the next 12 months, we have a, a process where we're transitioning to, um, you know, become a, a, a full, I guess, decentralized autonomous autonomous organization Amazing. and um, mm -hmm. uh, we want to have a, a really solid governance process in place and so um, watch this space because we'll be engaging with the community on what that looks like um, over the next six mm -hmm. to 12 months. Amazing, amazing. I mean, congratulations, Chris. Collaborations in the Web3 space uh, cannot be underestimated, as we all know, and you already have a flurry of uh, big name partners. Uh, can you disguise any of uh, new or potential partnerships or collaborations that will enhance the project's credibility and reach next level? 
Yeah, great question. Um, I have to be a little bit careful and not announce too much before it's. Uh, of course, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's good be time. Careful, but, definitely. Um, <laughs> we uh, yeah. about about twelve, a bit over twelve months ago, I think we announced a, a credential incubator, and the idea mm-hmm. put there was that we saw that you know this idea of decentralized um, credentials, KYC, KYB, mm-hmm. reusable credentials, compliant DeFi. Um, mm-hmm. was going to become a, an important sort of issue in, in the space. And so we made an announcement to basically bring together a whole bunch of car, uh, partners and companies that were working in that space. And through that has led to our relationship with Polygon ID, our relationship with Checked, Inclusive. We've got a whole host of partners in that space now. Um, so that's been a really successful initiative for us. Um, so what I can say is that we're doing a similar process at the moment behind the scenes in relation to AI and effectively, you know, we see a vision where it's possible to have a fully decentralized privacy preserving AI infrastructure. And we think Web3 is going to provide a pivotal role in that. And similarly, we think that Verita with its, you know, with our privacy preserving, you know, data storage is going to become a really important part of that um, solution stack as well. So. Um, watch this space, but um, there's a whole range of partnerships and collaborations that um, that uh, are in the process of being put together that we're super excited about, and and we think it's going to be a huge growth driver for us. Um, you know, moving into the rest of this year. Good on you, man. Um, anything else you would like to share with our community? Perhaps some exciting insights that nobody else heard of before, or something that you would just feel like you want to share it with us. Look, I'd, I'd make Please a real call out. I think um, this is a, you know, I mean, obviously I'm biased, but um, there's so much opportunity here. When you um, when you look at the real world, um, you look at, you know, most businesses in, in the real world today, for them to provide a product or service, they have to handle personal information. And so, you know, I really believe that in some ways, you know, the Web3 space has been a little bit fighting with two hands behind its back without being able to handle private information, you know, when they when we build products and services. And so now that that's possible with what we've built at Verita, it's, you know, people out there can start to build startups that can disrupt um, basically every industry vertical in the world. So I guess my call out would be to people in in, in your community, if, if you are interested in building, if you're interested in this space, maybe you're a developer, have a close look at what we're doing and understand the potential here in terms of the new types of apps you can start to build in Web3 and and who are the incumbents that you can start to disrupt because it's it's really exciting once you start to dive deep into it and uh, would love to uh, to talk to any of you feel free to reach out on our discord uh, reach out in our telegram or, or you know reach out on our twitter um, we're always happy to engage and um, and help guide people and, and, and teach them about this uh, new opportunity that uh, we're creating today well just the fact that you guys survived the bearish market which was the longest <laughs> in the crypto history it should um, raise something uh, in the people's minds so we wish you a lot of success, guys. We wish you a lot of efficiency and prosperity. Uh, good on you guys. You are making some uh, game-changing technology, which we definitely need in this market. We strongly suggest to our Asadis community to go and visit uh, the Reader's Telegram channel. Um, go and ask questions. Have a chat. These guys are open for any conversation you will uh, bring with yourself. And, you know, get into it, guys. I'm sure you will enjoy this project growth at its potential. And it has a huge and uh, beautiful future indeed. So uh, we wish a lot of great things to you, Chris, and your project. Uh, um, and especially because you're a fellow Aussies, uh, you know, <laughs> as we always say, oi, oi, oi. <laughs> so it should be Thank, totally thanks, fine. Dan, mate. Don't worry. Pleasure, mate. Once Appreciate the TG it. is done, yeah, once the <laughs> TG is done, you will uh, have some... Uh, uh, you know, very enjoyable and pleasant sleep, at least to say, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> Maybe for a couple of days. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Thanks, really Thank you, Chris. It. Thanks so much for having you today. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, guys. Thank you.